Hi everybody, it's Mrs. T, Mrs. T Can Talk. Uh, this is another video on combustion. Um, we're going to go through some combustion that has um, a compound that has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in it. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Beth Tuminella. I'm a chemistry teacher at Calhoun High School. So I've already done a video on combustion about just, if it just had carbons and hydrogens. This one is going to go through combustion if you have three elements present and a total mass of a compound. So for this particular video, um, we're going to be, this particular problem I should say, we're going to find the empirical formula of menthol. And menthol contains both, uh, contains all three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So instead of just C and H converting into the carbons of the CO2 and the hydrogens of the water, we now have an oxygen to deal with. And they give us a total mass of a sample of menthol of 0 0.1005 grams. And they're saying that it's burned in air, which again, remember, means that there's excess oxygen. So this is my excess reagent. And it produces 0 0.28, 29 grams of carbon dioxide and 0.1159 grams of water. So we're going to start this problem the same way that we started the one when it was just a hydrocarbon. We're going to keep in mind that this is a limiting reagent problem. We are going to burn the unknown completely so that all of the carbons get converted into the carbons of carbon dioxide and all of the oxygens get converted into the hydrogen of water. That means that we can work backwards and start from our amount of carbon dioxide to get backwards to our amount of carbon, and we can work that so that we can find out the amount of oxygen that was present in here, okay? So there will be another step after we get to moles of carbon and moles of hydrogen. But again, we're going to start the same way. We need to get from grams of carbon dioxide to moles of carbon. We need to get from grams of water to moles of H. We want these moles because remember, these subscripts are mole ratios. And the subscripts are the whole number mole ratios. So we need to know that CO2 is 44. Oops, I didn't mean to erase all of that. We need to know that CO2 is 44.01 grams per mole, and we need to know that H2O is 18.02 grams per one mole so that we can convert our grams of carbon dioxide and our grams of water to moles of carbon dioxide and moles of water. Remember, anytime you're starting with grams, the next step is going to be moles. We do that by multiplying by one mole over the gram formula mass. And we said that after we get to moles of CO2, we wanted to know how many moles of carbon this was. And in our formula, the subscript of, of C is one. So it's one C for every one CO2. My CO2s are numerator and denominator, so they can cancel. And when I do this math, I wind up getting my moles of C. If you don't have a calculator, if you're not jotting this down, I highly recommend that you take out your pen and your calculator, maybe pause, maybe go back and see if you can follow this. Simply watching along is not going to help as much as doing this with me. When you do the water the same way, Remember that since water has a different gram formula mass, we put its gram formula mass on the bottom. Grams of water cancel out. And remember, in my formula, I have two H's for every one H2O. So to cancel out the H2O's, I have to multiply by two H's over H2O. This will give me my moles of H. When I multiply these out and divide out, Again, you should be doing this with me on your calculator. Oops, I'm having trouble finding where I am. Okay. 
we wind up with that many moles of C. And that many moles of H. And I can kind of roughly see, oh look, 6.4, 12.8. This is like a 1 to 2 carbon to hydrogen ratio. Certainly we'll do the math later to see exactly what it is, but that's about the ratio. If you can kind of see like 64, 128, somewhere in there, we will be about a 1 to 2 carbon to hydrogen ratio. And if there were just carbon and hydrogen, we would say divide by the smaller number for both and then get the whole number ratio. But in this compound, we also have oxygen. So now we're going to say, well, this 0 0.1005 gram sample is made up of all of my grams of carbon plus all of my grams of hydrogen plus all of my grams of oxygen. And when I put those things together, I'm going to get my 0 0.1005 gram sample. So I have moles of carbon and I have moles of hydrogen. I need my grams of hydrogen oops, sorry, wrong one. I need my grams of hydrogen and my grams of carbon so that I can get my grams of oxygen. I need it for later, but I'm going to take these numbers and I'm going to convert them to grams of carbon and grams of hydrogen so that I can find out how many grams of oxygen were in this sample. So now, remember that carbon is 12.01 grams per mole and that hydrogen is 1.008 grams per mole, and then these numbers will be my amounts of grams of carbon and hydrogen that were part of this original sample. And what I wind up with for my grams of carbon is 0 0.00, you should be doing this math with me, sorry, not 0 0.00, Point zero seven seven two oh one two eight eight grams of carbon, and for the hydrogen, I wound up with point zero one two nine six six three nine two grams of H. So that's here. And this is here, right, those numbers. And if I take the point 0.1005 and I subtract this, I get my grams of oxygen. So you should do that math now. Add the two amounts of grams together, subtract from the total amount of grams of the sample, and now we're going to have our grams of oxygen. Oops, transposing numbers here. And when we get our grams of oxygen, it's 0 0.01033232 grams of oxygen. What do we need in order to get subscripts? We need mole ratios. If I now have my grams of oxygen, how do I get my grams of oxygen into moles? One mole over the gram formula mass. And now you should do this calculation. And I got 0 0.000645777 moles of oxygen. That number, along with, there's a highlighter, along with my moles of C and my moles of H, will give me my empirical formula. So now, we have C, we have H, and we have O. For C, I have 0 0.00642808084 moles. For H, I have 0 0.012863485 moles. 
And for O, I have 0 0.0006457. Moles. We're going to divide each one by the smallest result, which is the one with the three zeros in front, and I wind up getting 9.9586 moles of C, 19.919076 moles of H and one mole of O. What that means, 9.95 is 10. 19.91 is 20. And then O has a subscript of one. So this right here would be my empirical formula for menthol. C10, H20, Oh, so this problem was considerably more involved than the last one, but what I want you to keep in mind is that we haven't done anything different here. All we've done is applied the stoichiometry. We know that when we burn this hydrocarbon completely in air, what we're doing is converting all of the carbon to carbon dioxide, all of the hydrogen to water. So in order to only focus on the oxygen that came from the unknown compound, we had to find out how many grams of carbon came from this hydrocarbon, how many grams of hydrogen came from this hydrocarbon, and subtract from the original amount. Then we converted our oxygen to moles as well, compared our three mole amounts by dividing by the smallest result, and made it into a whole number ratio because remember, we're looking for whole number mole ratios when we're talking about our empirical formulas. Good luck, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, you can certainly reach out to me on Remind if you're one of my students. If you're not one of my students, you can explore around on my YouTube channel, Mrs. T Chem Talk YouTube, and see if you need any help with anything else. See you later.